or I wasn't reading the real scripture. But this is out of Romans. I'm going to do a lot of stuff in Romans today. If you haven't read the book of Romans lately, you owe it to yourself to go read the whole book. It's awesome, fantastic. It's amazing. And uh, I want to share with you some things this morning that I think are important. And uh, um, I know all of the things in the scripture are important, but I just, once in a while, something just comes to me and I'm going, that sounds important. So I better do something with that. But I'm going to start in Romans chapter 12. And I'm going to read just a little bit, a little bit of stuff here for you. Um, and I don't remember exactly where my verse was, but it's in this, I think it's in this chapter. We'll see. He, let me read to you. Let me just start in verse one and read a bit. It won't hurt you to hear the Bible. All right. Romans chapter one, verse one, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you, uh, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, accept them to God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is the, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath, God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Did you know something this morning? God dealt to you a measure of faith. I didn't do it. You were, when you got born again, boom, you were dealt a measure of faith. Let me explain to you what I mean, what I see in that, okay? How many of you know that all of us in here that are born, uh, you know, as a normal human, I know people look at me and go, you weren't. But I'm, I'm still, I'm still going to talk to you as if I was. Did you know all of us have the same muscle? The same muscle mass? Not mass, maybe, but the same muscles. Every one of you have the same muscles I have in your arm or in your leg. And I know some of you have bigger muscles in your tongue. But we all have the same muscles. Am I right? Am I right? We all have the same design. God gave all of us the same. I don't care if you're a woman or a man. You may have a little bit of a different shape, whatever, but you all have muscle. Would you agree? So we're, it's on the same level. We're all dealt the same thing, all of us. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. We're all dealt the same thing. Everybody, but the difference between Andy's muscle and my muscle or my muscle and Sharon's muscle or my muscle and Connie's or whoever is the difference in who worked them out. You know, I mean, I see, I see men with big old monster arms, you know, and I'm going, whoo, boy, that boy, he, he been pumping iron. He's a big boy. I've seen other big boys that have little teeny skinny arms. The difference is because they have the same, how many of you know we all have the same potential? Your muscles all have that same potential and God dealt to you a measure of faith. It's just whether you ever develop the faith because you have options, you have the opportunity, it can be done, but it's all on you. You don't have the option to say, well, I wish Sharon would pray for me. Well, Sharon can pray for you, but you're going to have to develop your own faith. How many of you know I do believe in prayer? Come on. And I do believe it pays to pray for people. But I do believe on the other side of that, that it's your responsibility. We got to do something about who we are. And if you, hey, if you want to develop your muscles, what do you got to do? Lay in bed and watch TV and eat cake and donuts, right? No, you got to get up and go to the gym, eat lots of protein, and you got to work out. You know why? Because your muscles will respond to that. Did you know your spirit will respond to stuff? Your spirit, you can dealt a measure of faith. And you know what? Everybody in here probably on a different level. I don't know. But you all have the same potential. Would you, would you agree? Pastor Kay, she said, yeah, you would. By the way, these are my friends right here. You know where they came from? Yeah, Oklahoma. The great state of Oklahoma. That's where they didn't come from. Every time I go to Oklahoma, if I call Pastor Kay in advance, she's very reluctant, but she lets me preach. She goes, well, you know, just don't go crazy. No, I'm just kidding. These are wonderful people. They came out, we're going to pray for Pastor Kay. We're going to pray for her uh, brother Butch. He, uh, he was in the hospital. I didn't know any of this, but we're going to pray anyway. Anyway, so um, thanks for coming over, by the way. I love you guys. You're awesome. You're awesome. Um, what was I talking about? Anyway. 
We was talking about we all have the same potential. Am I right? Yeah. Do you know, the Bible says that to those who can believe, just believe, you can go out there and slaughter the devil. That's what the Bible says. You don't have to be an apostle or prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. You just go believe. Go out there and tear the devil's face off. Did you know the Bible says that he's, the, the Lord shortly will bruise Satan under your what? Yeah, he will. I'm looking for, that's what we're doing. Did you know the whole purpose of your life, the whole purpose of Jesus' life was to destroy? That's in John, 1 John, it's right there. One of the three, it's right there. You come to destroy the works of the devil. How many of you would agree sickness is a work of the devil? Come on. Anyway, we'll go on. How many of you glad you've been given the measure of faith? God just handed it over to you. Say, here. Okay. Would you agree now that we all have the same potential? Yes? We do. We all have the same potential. We really do. And I, I want to read to you some things that, that I just love. I love this. But let me just read this begin, before I get to that. This is in Hebrews 11. How many of you know what Hebrews 11 is about? Faith. It's all about faith, right? Let me just read for you a bit. It says this way. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the world's, were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Okay? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Everybody say, he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please God, to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. I looked that word up. Diligently has to be, you know, you could say it this way, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that, He's a rewarder of those who diligently worship him. That word means worship. I found out something over my days that uh, you can do a lot of things, and I'm not saying they don't work, but I'll tell you one thing that does work, and that's worship. Man, it just changes stuff right away. It really does. And I said this the other day. I said because uh, it's, I think it's the truth I think we focus so much on the wrong stuff. Did you know the Bible says that God, he told Moses, he said, hey, stand still and just, I'm going to show you who I am, man. You don't have to fight. You don't have, you don't have to do a whole lot of stuff. You just need to stand still and you just need to ex just, just exalt me. I'll take care of it. But we focus on, oh my God, I'm sick. Okay, I know you're sick. God knows you're sick. You feel it. But in your sickness, can you focus on God and not sick? I wonder. And I'm not telling you it's easy because sometimes it's, a, when you do finally get sick, it's sometimes it's really hard to get out. It's better to worship God and never get in, right? How many of you know maintenance is a better operation? Take care of yourself. Eat more donuts, right? <laughs> Let me just read a bit. Let me just, the Bible says that, uh, but without faith, what? It's impossible to please God. It's impossible. Everybody just say one time, impossible. You can't do it without faith. It's just not possible. And you know why Enoch was translated? Because he what? He pleased God. He must have been a man of great faith. Because God was pleased with his life. Something was good. And God said, I just, I'm just going to go get the old boy. He got him, took him out of here, and he was not found. God translated him. Now, I know we're all going to get translated someday. Everybody will. If Jesus don't come, you'll get translated before you, when you die, boom. 
I remember when my mom and dad passed away. You know, I was thinking about it myself. You know, it's obvious. But, you know, they're laying there. And I don't know when Jesus comes or when the angels come, but I watched both of them take their last breath. And uh, if that's the end, or if they came and got him before. But I do know that probably that last breath was when the spirit was released and they left. Because you know what? When your spirit leaves, you ain't got no life. Because the life of the body is in the, is in the blood. I'm, 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 but it's in the spirit. If your spirit's gone, you ain't here. Because the real dude that's in here is the real dude. This is the real thing that's going on inside. That's the real person you are. We're going to get translated. Aren't you happy? I love that scripture, and I use it all the time concerning my mom and dad. I said, you know what? Listen, the only reason we sorrow is because we feel sorry for ourselves. It's the truth. And I, I hey, I admit I miss my mom and dad. I miss them all the time. You know, I was used to just getting on. The, I thought they were going to live forever because forever they were with us. I mean, hey, they're 94 years old when my dad died just a couple months ago. But I thought, you know what? Even up until they were, you know, in 93, 92, how old was mom when she passed? 92. My mom was healthy up until the day she wasn't, and then all of a sudden she died. And my dad, he was pretty healthy up until the time he couldn't, you know, do much, but he was still there. But I could get on the phone and, or at least go see him. There at the end, he wasn't, he didn't offer a lot because he was kind of like pretty old. But I miss that. I miss him. I think that's common. But I certainly, I certainly am not grieving as if I have no hope. Come on. Right? I, Christianity is awesome. What, is, what an amazing God. He says, I am. Jesus said, and this was way back when he's talking to Martha and Mary. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He didn't act like he was going to be someday. He was there and he is now. And you know what? I got absolute confidence that when you kick the bucket, your body may go back to the dust, but God's got the rest of you. He got the rest of you. He's going to take care of that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I'm guaranteeing you that being born again, you're guaranteed resurrection. Isn't that awesome? Didn't do nothing. You didn't do anything. Well, you walk with God, but he called you out and you got born again. And he goes, okay, did you know now you're not just have life, you are life. You, ain't, you, you, you are life. You are light. You are salt. That's who you are. That's who we are. Anyway, how many of you glad you're getting translated? Somebody says, just don't do it next week, God. Still got a few things I want to do, right? <laughs> All right, let me get over here and read you another scripture, all right? I wish you could see these, but I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that this particular little machine had to have an adapter, but I don't even know where it's at. We have to find it. This is in uh, Romans again. Um, how many of you read Romans 10 lately? Have you read Romans 10 lately? All right, let me read it for you, just a bit of it. Now, I'd like to read it all to you because it's that good, but I'm going to read a bit more than I should, or than I generally do, but I, it's okay. Now, verse 10, it's our, chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record, or I, yeah, bear them record, that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. How many of you have met people like that? Whew, they got their gung-ho, but they just don't have no brain. Right? Somebody said that's not exactly what he's talking about. All right, let me get back over here. Verse 3, it says, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own How many of you know can't, you can't establish your own righteousness? It ain't going to work. Have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. How many of you glad you submitted to the righteousness of God? Right? Okay, let me go on. It says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness uh, to everyone that believeth. Did you know that when you got born again, you don't have to live under the law? Amen. Not that it'd do you any good before. Be going. 
It says in verse 5, it says, Moses, for Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these, those things shall live by them, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, right? Speaketh on this, now remember, it speaketh on this wise, let me jump over, it says, it speaketh on this wise, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. <gasps> I'm going to shock you. Did you know what Paul preached? Did you know what Paul preached? The word of faith. He just said so. He said, he said, see, he just said that right there. He said, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, right? Which we preach. Okay. Somebody says, well, do you like the word of faith? Oh, no, I love the word of faith. Because I want to get into some other things on down here a little bit further. Let me, and I, you, if you notice, I jumped a bit, a, a, a few scriptures in there, but it's okay because it fits right in there, didn't it? You didn't know I jumped it until I told you, unless you know the Bible. <laughs> Let me read on. It says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For if the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. What? There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek? No, there's no difference. If you're a Jew, you still got to get born again. All right, let me read on. Let me find where I was at. He says, for the same Lord is the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Or how shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall... They preach except they be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and, glad, and bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah uh, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, watch this now, verse 17 is very important. So then, so then faith cometh, by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, how they have they not heard? I'm going to leave it alone. Let me just back up and let me just say this. Watch this now. I want to just share this with you because this is important for me to say this. Everybody remember this. He says, so then faith, what? Cometh. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now I want to just talk about that. Now, I know that word cometh is italicized, but it's the same principle. They just add it so you could understand it a little better. So then faith, let me just talk to you a minute. See, this is where people mess up. How many of you know when people mess up, then it makes everything look bad because they messed up? Somehow or another, we got this idea that How, how can I say this? All Christians are just packed full of faith. Well, not all Christians are packed full of faith, okay? It's the truth. Come on. Let me explain to you. So then faith, what? Cometh. What does that mean to you? That means it's not here yet. It's coming, but it's developing, right? Developing, developing. How do you develop muscles? You work at it. You keep calling it. Did you know that he said faith, you, you know, it cometh by hearing. No, you speak. How do you hear? How do you hear? You speak, right? You speak. How did you get born? How did you get born again? You believed in here and you spoke something with your mouth. Am I right? That's the first principle. Everything works that way. Everything works that way. You, you believe it in here and you speak it with your mouth. And faith cometh by hearing. Let me say it again. Faith cometh by hearing. If I call Darla, say, hey, Darla, come here. Does that mean she's here? No, she's coming. Can you hear that? What am I saying? I'm saying that it takes, it may take a minute. It may take a while. If you'd have called my dad, you'd have been standing a long time. because faith, faith cometh, but he's just slow. Do you hear what I'm trying to say? Faith cometh by what? 
How many of you know that faith don't come when you don't talk? Somebody said, well, I don't talk to myself. That's your problem. You need, to, you, need, you need to talk to yourself. You do. Talk scripture to yourself. Come on, are you listening to me? Talk faith, talk scripture. You know, somebody said, how do you pray? I pray the scripture. Why should I do that? Because that's what God said. What does faith do? It calls those things that be not as though they were. It sounds like, you know, uh, Hebrews 11 there. It just, there was nothing there, but now but, but there's something there. Faith creates. It does. See, for some people, faith is difficult. You know that? And it is difficult. It is. It, it is. I'm not telling you the faith comes easy. I didn't say that. It don't. You know why? Because you're just so full of unbelief and so full of garbage that sometimes it takes a while to continue to work in there and change your mind and change your mind and change your mind until you say, oh, yeah, I believe that. Have you ever heard of a pathological liar? You say, well, I could probably name a few, huh? Yeah, I could too. Watch TV. You'll see a lot of pathological liars. And sometimes the people they're interviewing are worse. You know why the pathological liar is? He's the guy that believes everything he says, even though he's lying. And sometimes it's easier just to go ahead and lie than to tell the truth. Have you ever met those kind of people? The truth is right in front of them, but they'd rather lie to you. And the truth is right in front of me, but they'll come and lie to me. I'm going, what in the world is your problem? Well, they'd just rather lie. I don't know. Somebody says, well, that's what you're doing when you're confessing the word. You're just lying. No, you're not. You're confessing what God said. You're speaking the word. Faith cometh because you're speaking the word. Can you hear what I'm trying to say? I didn't say faith had arrived. I said it's coming. There's a come a day when it's, it's going to be there. Are you, are you picking up what I'm trying to say there? It's going to happen. It just may take you a while. Now, you might, you might really hate me for this, but you know what? Unfortunately, so many people out there that call themselves Christians, including me, are pretty carnal. <gasps> You're mean. No, I'm right. Uh, come on, are you, are you so proud you couldn't say, well? You know, I remember when I was praying for money to go to India the first time. Somebody says, how come it took you a year? Probably because I had a year's worth of unbelief packed in there. It was hard to get rid of it. And I mean, I spent a lot of time confessing the word and worshiping God. I spent a lot of time every single day without fail. Somebody says, you're discouraging me. <laughs> I told you it wasn't necessarily easy, but it works. It'll work every time, man. But it might take a minute. You know, that's my problem. I don't have a minute. How about you? Well, I don't have a minute. Bless God, let me just have that faith right now. I got a better thing. No. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Did you know, I believe in, I, believe, I, I really believe that it helps you when you put on healing scriptures. Do you, you believe that? I believe it. But I think it even helps you more when you say them. You hear me? How do we communicate? Can you read my mind right now? What am I thinking? Just tell me what I'm thinking. Dorley is a prophetess. <laughs> I love it. You're always cocky and ornery, aren't you? <laughs> hey, you can't read my mind, even though Darla was right. <laughs> you can't read my... I'm telling you, you have to say things. Can you hear what I'm trying to say? You can't just come up and just... You know, I was talking to Wayne one day, and he, he said, I read the Bible out loud. I said, that's brilliant. I don't always read the Bible out loud. How many of you read the Bible out loud? Really? Come on. Do you read it out loud most of the time? A lot of times I just read it 
you know, because I can't, I can just read it without actually saying it. But I believe we're better off to do what Wayland was saying. You need to out loud say the word because there's power in your speech. Yes. Man, I hate that because I say the wrong thing. Come on. How many of you know that we say the wrong thing? And it's so easy for, because out of the abundance of the, oh, cut it out. The mouth what? Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart. In other words, what's down on the inside of you, it's going to come out of you, boy. Sometimes Kelly looks at me, she said, was that down in there? Sure enough. I said it, right? That's the reason that, you know, you can always kind of hang around people for a minute and you can tell, you can tell how they really feel when they start to talk, right? They'll say one thing and you get them around a little while and all of a sudden something else is coming out and you're going, whoa, 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 whoa. Sweet water and bitter water don't come out of the same what? Don't do it. But yet it does it. Shouldn't be, but it is. Faith cometh. You got to remember that. You know, when you speak the word, you know what the Bible says? Let me just share this with you. I got to quit. What time is it? I don't even know what time it is. The Bible says this. It says, don't be weary. What? In well-doing, right? The best thing you can do is just continue to speak. Call those things to be not as though they were. You know, um, I told Kelly one day, I said, you know what we need to do? Because we're believing Kelly's legs are healed, right? Healed. I said, how do you, how do you see your legs, Kel? How do, how do you see them? Well, I look down there and there they are. I didn't ask you that. I said, how do you want? I should have said, how do you want to see them, right? Because when you look down there and they, and they seem to be the same all the time, it's like, it's, it's discouraging. Would you agree? Come on. It can be discouraging. I told her, I said, let's do this different. You wear long sleeve or long pants, right? Where you can't see them. And then take a picture of some women's legs that are just gorgeous. You know, from her knee down. Just take a picture. And put that picture right in the middle of the mirror. Father, thank you. That's my legs. And just see that. And did you know you, you've always, you've heard that you'll see, you, you, you'll be drawn or go to what you see right? Remember I told you the story about the little boy who was riding the bike? His dad told him, he said, now listen, son. He said, we're going to help you get the, we're going to help you ride this bike. Remember? But don't hit that tree out there in the middle of the road or the yard. What'd he do? He focused on the tree and he hit it. You'll focus on whatever you're focused on. You're probably going to hit it. So if you focus on what you want, you'll get it. If it's according to God's word, that is. You hear me. There's some things that are screwball. You're not going to get. It's got to be based in the word of God, right? But if it's based in the word of God and, and Jesus has died for it and he's given you the right, you can say and you can go there and you'll get it, right? I believe that. I believe that with my whole heart. You know, I remember back in the day, and I've told this story many times, but I just remember back in the day, I remember the first time I ever heard Dave Roberson preach. He stirred me up. He just stirred me right up. And, uh, but I remember, I thought to myself, self, I think I'm going to practice that and see what happens. I want to see if this guy's lying to me. How many of you know you can practice what you hear and you can prove the word of God? You don't have to take my word for nothing. Just see if it works. Go practice it yourself. Spend some time in the word every day, speaking the word over whatever you're looking for and just see where it takes you. I remember in those days I worshiped the Lord and I remember in, in, some, er in some areas of my life, I remember thinking, well, I, I want to do this. I want that. And I want, well, after a while you worship God and you forget what you wanted because it wasn't important no more. But I still got them. Let me explain to you that I, I believe that worship transforms you into places that you might not uh, otherwise be or go. And some of the things that you just dearly think you have to have, all of a sudden you dearly say, huh, what do I need that for? I don't, I don't, I don't know what I wanted that for. 
boy, you know what? It's amazing how I can preach myself into a corner. Right? I remember people come and say, man, you just spoke right to me before. You know, how do you do that? I don't. The Bible always speaks to folks right where you live. Faith cometh. You got to get a handle on that. So don't be discouraged if it takes a while. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What is my point? I guess I'm going to say it one more time. If something's coming, it hasn't arrived. You know, we have this little app on our phone. Man, Andy hates our phones because our little app is from Amazon. And Andy and Amazon hate one another because <laughs> he has to deliver the garbage. <laughs> okay? But you know what? You get on the app, but, but, but you punch it, you punch whatever you're doing there, you know, and you go through the whole operation, and it says, it's shipped. What does that mean? It's coming. Have you got it? No, it's shipped. It just told you it's coming. It's cometh. Faith cometh. You know, your portable record player is on its way. Whatever you ordered is shipped. But it ain't here yet, is it? Now faith is a substance. It's shipped. It's a substance. And it's the evidence, but you ain't got it. But it is shipped. Can you hear what I'm trying to tell you? Say, that's really not very deep. I didn't expect it to be very deep because I'm not very deep. I'm just trying to make a point. Faith cometh. The next time you click on that little deal, it says, oh, won't be long, going to be out for delivery. And Andy's in there throwing it in his bag. Come on, are you with me? I'm trying to make a simple application of what's going on. He's throwing it in his bag. And the next time you look, it says, whoo, out for delivery. Won't be long. Here comes that faith. And it's fixed to be there. But my point is, it's coming. How many of you just take your phone and say, bless God, I ain't going to wait on that no more. I'm just going to stomp my phone. Sick of waiting. No. You patiently. How many of you know faith worketh patience? You know, even male worketh patience. Because our male, and it's not Andy, but Las Vegas, they don't even know what they're doing. They, get, they lose everything. Not everything, but they lose. Anyway. I'm trying to make a point here. The next time you open your phone up, it'll say this. It'll say, delivered. Ha! I have received. Can you hear the application? I have received. But faith cometh. There's a point where you say, oh, I got it. Right? How's that for an application? You hear what I'm trying to say? I'm telling you, sometimes we're impatient. Did you know sometimes you order from Amazon, it comes from China? When it comes from China, you're going to be waiting a bit because China is not across the street. But it's coming. Did you know that it, it's the same principle? How many, of you, how many of you have an order in with God? Come on, are you, are you that well? You don't have an order in with God at all? You don't even need nothing? You're just, oh, I'm good. I don't need anything. I'm just perfectly healthy, and I'm good. Just leave me alone, God. Right? No, none of us is that way. Did you hear me? None of us is that way. We ain't God at all. Did you know that when you put your, I'm, I'm trying to talk on a level where it's just so understandable. When you put your order in with God, Faith cometh. Just don't be weary in well-doing. Sometimes you might have to get up and walk the floor. Beat down that unbelief. Praise God, I got it. Thank you, Father, I got it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He paid the ultimate price that I can walk in this. And bless God, I'm going to walk in it. Are you with me? Somebody says, why don't you all do that? Can you give me that answer? We don't all do that because we don't all. Uh, you know what? You'll do that if you get sick enough. But the facts are we should do it now before we get that sick. 
Because sometimes it's really hard to stand up and walk when you don't feel like walking. Sometimes it's really difficult. I remember when I had COVID. It would have been a lot easier just to die than to get up and walk. I'm telling you the truth. That's how I, I don't know how to describe that that I had. I don't know how to describe it because I can't remember being deathly sick, but yet I didn't have enough energy to spit. I remember laying on the bed going, oh, no, i got to go to the bathroom. I don't, I don't think I have the energy to do that. I remember when I finally thought I had enough energy to take a shower, I got in the shower and I thought, nope, I thought wrong. I managed. I got out. And then later, late, late, later, way on down the road a bit, I remember I had some trees and I thought, man, I, you know, since I've been sick, I haven't even checked on the water for them poor little devils. I better go check them. And I remember I got halfway out on the end of my 40, about halfway out there, and I'm going, well, maybe I better turn around right here. Because if I walk clear on out there, it's really going to be stressing my ability. And I remember thinking, what in the world happened to me? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, maybe we ought to spend more time worshiping God now in order that we don't have to go through that then and try and come back from that. You hear what I'm trying to say? I'm not saying you won't come back. I didn't say that. I'm just saying that when I was sick like that, you know how much I felt like walking the floor and worshiping God? Zero. You, have you ever, come on, am I right? I'm right, I know. I mean, that's just humanity. Somebody says, well, you're making me mad, so you ought to just quit. Okay, I will. I'll just quit. <laughs> hey, don't be weary in well-doing. You need to remember these words, faith cometh by hearing. I didn't say it was there. I said faith. You know, somebody says, well, yeah, but he was talking about preaching the gospel. It doesn't matter. You know, how will they know if they don't get preached to? How will you know? How will you know anything if somebody don't communicate faith to you and to the point where you can get a hold of that and say, oh, I understand. Why do you think Jesus said speak to this and speak to that? Jesus was speaking to everything and everything he spoke to, something happened, right? It's the truth. But I'm not telling you you need to speak to everything. I'm telling you you need to speak to that gentleman you look in the mirror at. Right? Because he's the guy that's either making or breaking you. You know, I always love to blame other people because it takes the pressure off. Right? Bless God, if Connie had leave the church, we'd be better off. Yeah, right? Isn't that the way we think? Come on. Is it the, is it, how stupid is that? And most of the time, it's just the simple fact is that you just are too dumb to look in the mirror. Is that too straight? That's the truth. Somebody says, I won't say that. Anyway, hey, you are most of the time your own worst enemy. But listen to me, you can change that. Faith cometh, and it'll change your life. How many of you know faith can change just everything about who you are, everything about your circumstances? It'll do a lot of work. Somebody says, how long will it take? Let me read. Let me tell you what. Faith is a time, I mean, uh, cometh is a time word. You know what a time word is? It's like until. You just got to stick to it. Did you know that's the worst character most humans have? No stick to it. Kelly told me yesterday, you ain't got no stick to himness, whatever that is. If you stick to it, you'll get it. I started the carnivore diet. Have you ever done the carnivore diet? I told her, I said, you know what? I don't mind. It's just so boring. It's boring. I mean, I don't, you know, I love beef, but I don't just want to, but it does work. I know a lot of people who got their health back doing that. It works. What's the carnivore diet? Well, it's just don't eat no nasty chicken. Eat beef. What's for dinner? Beef. Huh? Chicken and fish? Well, I don't mind fish. 
But I love beef, you know. So you eat beef, butter, and cheese, and eggs. Drink water. I got some stuff. Somebody says, are you ever going to quit? I don't know. I got some stuff over in the refrigerator. It's called, it's just pure, it's just sparkling water like, you know, it's just bubbly water. It's called orange cream. Man, I drank three of them puppies right in a row the other day, yesterday. Right down. They're good, but there's no sugar, nothing in there, just good old stuff. I don't know if carbonation is good or bad for you, but I got it. But, you know, I was, but if you do the carnivore diet, did you know that you can't gain weight? And it'll heal all the inflammation in your body. Did you know that? So I didn't know that. Well, I'm telling you, this is revelation, maybe. I'm giving you revelation, maybe. I didn't know that. It'll heal. It's amazing. But it's boring. You get up in the morning, what are you going to eat? Well, probably some meat or egg. You mean you're not going to have a donut? Nope, nope, no donut. We're addicted to sugar and wheat. Come on, I am. This is the truth. That's what Kelly told me. You can't stick to a carnivore diet. It ain't easy. It ain't easy, but it does work. It does work. What am I just trying to say this? If we can stick to something, we'll get the stuff, right? How many of you know if you need to dig a ditch from here to there, if you stick to it someday, you'll get it. But if you just give up, you'll never get it. Man, that makes me mad. I don't even want to hear myself say that because so much of the time it's easier just to quit. Are you with me? Okay. I listen, I wasted, well, I didn't waste your time, but appreciate you listening. Come on down, let's pray together, all right?